Oh, there we go. All right, cool. All right, bet. What bet. the hell bet. happened? Bet. All right. There we All go. right. Hey. I got, of, I got rid of the illumination. Oh, man. Oh, damn. Yeah. You see what now I'm saying? Official. It's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, you right. <laughs> your official tissue. So, look, right? So, look, but I want to go back to what, what, what Lord Jamal was saying. Uh, you were saying you, you embrace uh, a, a lot of music. I'm just trying to say, I feel like it was more, more the, the, uh, the, the label heads and the radio people that might have made y'all feel that way as opposed to the average person. I just want to put that yeah, out. There. Well, as opposed to the artist, I will say. Right, that, as opposed to the artist. Yeah, yeah, it was like, you know, the fact that, you know, you got editors from magazines who were born on the East Coast up north and, you know, um, they were cultured by the East Coast uh, Northern artists and they came into position uh into authority uh right for the soul from working hard but they came into authority to kind of critique music from everywhere mm -hmm. but they were unable to give most not all most was unable to give subconsciously a non-biased opinion right because it was all based on you the foundation that they knew and because they was in positions of authority, they kind of led, guided, and directed the opinions of the majority with, you know, they take on things. i give you an example. Why do we not celebrate 8-Ball and MJG the same way we celebrate Mob D? Because they didn't, because honestly, because they didn't have the same effect in the North and the East that they did in their in their uh respective area and guess what mob deep didn't have the same effect down south and in the midwest as they did up top and i ain't taking nothing away from mob deep because i was up top i was right. in, I, I spent my summer up there in, in what was it 94 i think it was when you know when shook one came uh, 94 94 95 something like that anyway but i was up there so i know hey, how about I say you you careful now? You talking to a mob deep stand right here now. <laughs> I ain't tripping. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Hey, listen, man. Hey, listen, man. Hey, for one, God I feel you. I feel God you bless though. Prodigy. God bless prodigy and, and, and love and respect to have it. Ain't taking nothing away from their from, from, from their legacy. But what I'm telling you is put them in Memphis. Right. And let's see how much of a celebration there'll be. I feel you. That's valid. Now that's you know real. What I mean? That's real. You can say one can say the same for triple six for triple six mafia. I mean, it's a few different. It's a Listen, few different, I, you know. I, I would be lying if I didn't say that we had a certain arrogance. You know, when we first came out, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I've been quoted. I was in that. What's that shit on Netflix <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> no, I was in. I was in Netflix when I was talking about how. We kind of just felt like New York was going to make the music and everybody else was just going to kind of listen to it. We didn't necessarily think that other people was going to start making it. Like, right. Like, mm. we, thought that, we thought this was our export to the world. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we. But that's fair. That's fair and honest. And that's all I've been looking for a fair and honest discussion. Right, you know right. Because most yeah. motherfuckers from New York won't even admit that. No, well, no, that's, that's totally real. Like, I think that we. And, oh, oh, oh! Well, let me keep it even more real. There was a time when we thought that being from down south meant you were slow. Mm -hmm. Meant like in, in in all kinds of ways. But you know why? Because like I remember being like sixteen, and my man Ja Will, his grandmother lived in North Carolina, right? So we drove down to North Carolina to stay down there for like a week or some shit, and. But when we got down there, everything from the music to the fashion to the to the um to the slang, everything was literally about three months behind what New York was doing. Absolutely factual. And but but this is before the internet and all this type of shit. Sure. But when you see that, you like, oh shit! Like they don't even know about this. They don't know about that. They still wearing this. Like it gives you a certain perception that right. everything is slower down there. And yeah. at this point, though, we have zero concept 
of manufacturing distribution hubs <laughs> right, right. make their way from Paris. You don't know and none the of first that. stop should be New York, and then it has to be distributed to the rest of the country from that. Like we don't Absolutely. have that understanding. At all, at all. Uh, and when it's I was all... spending time, when I was spending time in New York, I understood it. Like, okay, cool. As soon as I get here, all right. So they gonna make fun of me for how I talk for two weeks. Then I'm gonna get into <laughs> a fight with somebody. Then when they see that I'm, then when they see I can fight, and then it develops. So I, I went through this like three years straight. <laughs> Mm. And then after that third year, like I like they would get, oh man, that's that, that, that's that's good. Then it, it became like, okay, I was they new, I was they southern partner. But before I would this slow nigga from the country nigga from the south until I showed them themselves somewhere in me. You see what I'm saying? Right. Everywhere we go, we looking for ourselves. Right. I I right. showed them that hey man. You ain't gonna find similarities in how we talk. You gonna find similarities in how we are. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And I think, yeah, I think that that's you know, but I, and vice versa, and vice versa. Word. Um, and I think yeah. you know, but it, it's that is that part of my upbringing that allowed me to be as diverse as an artist as I, I I've been able to be, and you know, to to raise the bar of of my skill set. Word. I want to. I want to ask you. Um, to what do you think it is like? What What is it about track that stuck and is like still going strong as opposed to crunk, which kind of seem more of like a trend or a, a wave? Well, like, how do you I feel mean, about the the crunk era? I mean, I really. I mean, I think that that was a wonderful. It was a wonderful, beautiful moment in time. You know what I'm saying? I think it's okay. I guess I think the, the, the like the 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 the, the crunk era, a beautiful moment in time. I think there's legendary music and legendary artists came out of there. I think that you know it 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 definitely made its mark and to put the South on the map in a way that it wasn't before. Um, trap music is associated to pain. Trap music is associated to adversity trap right. music is directly associated to the effects that came from the war on drugs the crack era you know what i mean now the opioid crisis you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. uh the 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 cannabis boost uh the cannabis boom i should say um like trap music is because everybody no matter where you from in some way, shape, form, or fashion has been affected by drugs and drug use. Somebody, somewhere, right. everywhere, whether it's your mom, whether it's your pops, whether it's your big brother, your uncles, your aunts, your you, your best friend, whatever it is, somebody has had an experience. Everybody has had an experience. Trap music of merely uh, phil philosophical presentation set the music based on those experiences. So as people have these experiences, they continue to have these experiences, they're looking for soundtracks to, to, to go with these experiences. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, so as long as people are continuing to have these experiences, trap music will continue to be uh, as influential as it has been. Because everybody, again, is looking for themselves. Right. Do you do you feel that uh well compared to you all you have there was a lot of lyricism there do you feel that that's going away with these new artists because you know there was one did you see the video where um Snoop Dogg is making fun of the mumble rap he goes I don't know what the fuck they saying humna 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 do you feel because you all had lyrics we heard your stories we heard it. But then now it's starting. You think that it's they're starting to get away from it? Is it just? Is it really mumble rap, or are you like, nah? I'm fucking with that. That's just a different version of what we do. Well, first and foremost, I'm definitely fucking with it, uh, but I don't fuck with it all because of the lyrics. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't look for everything from one person or from one artist. You know, it's so much of, of a broad diversity now. It's so like you have so much to choose from that. Okay, I think it's like a 
a scale, right? So you got motherfuckers who highly skilled and lyricists. Then you got motherfuckers who really bad that life and living what they rapping about. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes you have motherfuckers who more heavier on living what they rapping about. Sometimes you have motherfuckers who have your own creating great songs and have high lyricism, uh, high level lyricism. And sometimes you got motherfuckers just right. I like to consider myself right there in the sweet spot. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> but I can appreciate, let's just say somebody like, they call it 21 Savage. I like I love 21 Savage. I love 21 Savage. I love 21 Savage. I you know, like some people Savage. might say that, you know, he ain't as much of a lyricist as other people. He's not, he not the best ah. lyricist, but I love what he stands hey, for. Check it out. What he says, I feel, I know he means, it resonates. Yeah. And just the Set. way he moves. I'm good right. with that. I'm good with that. You dig what I'm saying? I know I can go to Sci High to Prince if I want some just some high level, high energy, you know, just a, a, a elevated skill set. Right. But he ain't gonna give me the same thing 21 can give me. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know because I can go to J. Cole, and I think that's why I feel like that collaboration was so special when uh J. Cole and 21 got on a uh, on the track together because you show high uh, 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 a high skill set of lyricism and like extra authenticity but executed almost perfectly mm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you can't really tell the difference nobody felt in the middle of 21 savage verse that oh man this ain't j cole nobody felt like that because he did his thing a whole lot different and made you appreciate him you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i feel like music is about how it makes you feel it's not absolutely. necessarily about always the lyrics or it, right the right parts of it absolutely. there's intangibles that you can't sometimes put your finger on and that is how it makes you feel so you absolutely. got niggas that can say the simplest shit, but it's the way they're saying it absolutely. it's the nigga who's saying it mm -hmm. and how you receiving it mm -hmm. that yeah. it's that shit hot absolutely mm -hmm. i give you another one right so you said you were talking about uh uh, mumble rappers and so on and so forth. Hey, listen, man. Who understood every word James Brown was saying? <laughs> On the mind. James, James didn't even know how to. <laughs> I mean, who understood that though? Is he still a legend? Absolutely. He he is sure is. Still not timeless. Do it still not resonate to this day? What does undermine mean? What does undermine? Undermine. What does that mean? I'm gonna do my thing. Hit him in that new eye night. Hit him in that new I bet them motherfuckers back there who wanted their check understood what he was saying. Right. <laughs> hey, I give you they another know one. that James language. I give, I give you another one. Who understood every word older the bastard was saying? Hmm. Hmm. It never received that kind of critique because where it came from. You know I mean? Wu Tang. Who understood every word? Let's call it uh, Bone Thugs in Harmony City. Oh, I damn sure didn't. Oh, I did. Oh, no, I did. <laughs> no, 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 no. I damn sure didn't. I was like, I'm just saying, we uh, have gone. I got you. Periods. Yeah, only the, the, the biggest. We've gone through periods and generations of when we heard things that we felt but may not have been able to articulate perfectly. But we still roll with it because of nah, this connection. Those are great examples. Those are great examples. So nah, now I, we get the young I did thug, ask you to write down bone thug, thug, thug. When we get the young thug, why are we holding him to such a high criteria that we didn't hold Jane Brown, uh, old dirty bastard, or bone thugs and harmony to? Why can't we just let him rock the way we let them rock? Well, yeah, Stevie Wonder the same way. Yeah, well, yes, I got some better kisses. Oh, yeah, Liz. Yes, I got that. I, I still don't know what Mama said, Mama Simon Michael. So I, <laughs> right, right. I don't think he knew either. I still don't know what. But we loved is. it, and we all say it, and we hell all yeah, know hell it. yeah. So we good, point, point, good point, good point. I don't think we in a good. I don't think we like being fair by you know uh, 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 placing that burden on on, on the youngster's shoulders like that. Yeah, yeah, right on. Listen, let's get back to okay. So, so you get into hip hop, 
you know, you get exposed to it. So now you 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 loving it, you feeling it. So now what makes you want to start fucking with it? And when do you when do you find out that you know TI is somebody that could actually do this thing? And then when you know what I mean, when did you feel like you could really do this shit? Um for me, uh I recall the third grade uh aptitude test in oh. public schools. Um you know, there's every third every third grade student has to take a test to check where they, where they are, so they'll know what category or class to, or what placements your classes should be in going on. Also, used to distinguish how many more prisons to build in the future mm. by the percentage Ooh. of children that fail. Ooh. But mm. separate discussion. Mm. Uh, this particular day, this particular test, I finish early, as I used to always finish early on my test as a kid it's in public school. But I had got in trouble for disrupting the class. And my uncle told me if I disrupted the class again, he was going to kick my ass. I ain't want no ass with him. So what I did was I started writing the rap, even though I was finishing for the rest of the class. So to keep me from, you know, acting out, I started just trying to write a rap using shit like I'm bad and other songs that I heard and, and, and could appreciate as a, a barometer or a standard. Uh, and I started to write, write a rap. And by mm. the time everybody else was finished, I had a little, you know, a little eight bar, 10 bar rap rope. And I performed it at the playground. And everybody went crazy. Mm. And they didn't believe that I could write. They, they didn't believe that I did it myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so then they challenged me to write another one by tomorrow, and I did. They went crazy again, and it just got better and better. Then I made my way to the cafeteria table. Well, I was the only one in my school who was rapping. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was third, fourth, fifth grade, I was the only one in my school who was rapping. By the time I made it to sixth, seventh, eighth grade, then it was kind of like a crew, maybe five, six of us. So wait, hang on. I what was the standard? I'm sorry. What was the standard? LL Cool J. LL Cool J. LL Cool J was the standard. LL okay. Cool J was the standard at that time. Run DMC, LL, uh, you know, that's that's of the things that I saw that I saw myself in. That was, it. of course, I've been exposed to NWA, but I didn't. That felt like that was no man's land. That was kind of like off limits material. I just had the pleasure of, you know, listening to it. LL, uh, Brand DMC, maybe some Will Smith or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Those cool Mo D. Like, cool Mo D. Yeah, he just seemed like a grump, like too old for me at the time. Even though he just he always a little old for us at the time, to be yeah, honest. He just like came time he made records, he was. It seemed like yeah, I fuck with it. I fuck with. It. I used to like Wild Wild West real a whole lot, but even like Big Daddy Kane, Big Daddy Kane, that shit seemed like oh, they grown up music, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, <laughs> even, even like Rakim, it, like I heard it and I loved it. But I'm like, I ain't even gonna try to touch that shit yet. Let me just stick right here with where I feel like. <laughs> All right, this lane. Yeah, you know I mean, and but it but it, it it helped me. It helped me to elevate and kind of figure out, you know, cadences and how to switch up cadences. Yes. And, how to take parts of my life and apply it to what's going on with the world. And you know what I mean? That was enough to get me there. And then, you know, I just began to expand my horizon with people like Ice Cube, Tupac, uh, uh, like I said, Rakim, uh, Boogie Down Productions, um, Brand Nubians. You did uh, Of course, you got a uh, tribe. You know what I mean? Twister. Um, man, man, if you put out a record back, if you put out a record between 89 and 95, I bought it. Mm. I don't give a damn what it was. Word. I, I ask you that because I feel like it's important that people have good standards to, you know what I mean? To know what to go by. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever business that you're in, you should have certain standards that, yo, I don't want my shit to fall below this. Mm. It's gonna be fucked up. It's not gonna be mandatory. Yes, and I, I just think uh, something as simple as that. A lot of people don't know that they don't. 
they don't naturally set standards for themselves like or their standards are so fucking low where they need to raise them shits a little bit you know what i've heard i've heard is if you don't know what you're not you'll never know what you are hmm speak on it that's some shit. i think i think that might be why people you know are so hard on the youngins because we we feel like you know we feel like the standards are so low for them like like even if you're you know even if it's not your goal to do this long term or be a, a high level lyricist like whatever your goal like whatever mission it is you're trying to accomplish i personally feel like a lot of them are not still taking the time to to do the research or be a virtuoso in your respective lane cuz i could tell when you're you know if you're if you're using your brain and you're and you're smart and you're being you know you're you're being artistic about it but it comes out this way as opposed to i'm just being lazy and i'm just doing this well okay now this is one thing we all know big business kills culture period for mm. sure you get what i'm saying so all of us have been in the game and we've all been in the place where you know we allow big business to take the front seat. And we did some stuff that we know we eh, I don't feel that good about it. But I'm a I'ma do my best to make it dope. I'ma compromise. I'm a, you know what I mean? We've all been in that position. So to think that we can be in that position, but they should not be in that position. I don't think that's fair to them. I'm a guy another so when you said but they have way more options and way more resources. You're right. You're right. But we, but we got to, we got to use ourselves as the example. I don't think we could compare them to something that we ain't seen. Like you said, you said, what if they ain't, you know, uh, doing the research and doing it? Look, what are they just trying to stay out of prison and keep from killing people and 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 not see a dope? Could they promise their grandmama before she died that they wouldn't do it no more? What if that's they go? What if that's what they own? Right. And a uh, perfect example, little baby. Let's say little baby, man. Little baby made it out of prison, bro. And you know, it was cats around him who were rapping, but he pulled up. He was gambling. He was a gambler. And motherfuckers like uh, Slime, a uh, uh, thugger, and, and, and my 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 partner, rest in peace, OG Truth, told and, and Roscoe, Pee Wee Roscoe, told little baby, hey, listen, man, you can do this shit for real, bro. Why don't you got down? Let that go and fuck with this a little bit. This man out of prison, off the, out the trap. Just say, okay, cool, I tried. And then the motherfucker sat him down and kind of showed him what a bar was and showed him how to. He had stories and he got game for days. But how to apply that shit to music? He could have never came in the game with the skill set and the understanding that he has now. He could have never came in okay. there day one. So but but he's that, but he's dope. But it but, <laughs> but but even but even but like now what you just now the story that you just said about him like when I listen to when I listen to him now like performing on the Grammys last oh, he night got, oh he in his bag it's, now he it's got, like <laughs> exactly he like got the rain. Like I mean, that, that isn't luck. Like that takes a particular, you know, it is, you know, it is part luck, but it takes a particular, you know, it, it, it takes a particular mentality, a, 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 a particular training, if you will, or just, just a discipline, a, a, a discipline, particular discipline. a particular and discipline. Sacrifice. A particular discipline, a particular sacrifice. And you can hear, even though like, you know, that may not be your favorite lyricist. You can hear somebody and know that, okay, it's something special about that person. And, and that's all. We we just we just want, I just want to be able to, you know, when I put this thing away, I don't want to turn back around and it's just completely gone. Like we want, like I, yeah, I want to, I want to know that like somebody was listening, like you know, like y'all still holding on to, you know, the gems that we're passing on, even if y'all doing it your way. They'll never be, but see, it ain't like now. It ain't a, it ain't a us and y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's a we and they. You dig what I'm saying? Because I feel like, bro, you can't not see that your legacy is being passed down when you, you know, what I'm saying, you see people like Rhapsody. Oh, for uh, sure. You see, uh, 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 
Remy Ma, you know what I'm saying? Even Cardi B, like, you know what I mean? Like, they listening, they just take what they see of themselves mm -hmm. and apply it to their story and their journey. It can't look exactly like us. Right. Then they not being themselves. So I think we just kind of got there, got to get them a little leeway, man, to do their thing. I and feel that. Come around. We I feel that. Up. We know what it's like to be young. And you know what? And that's something that's something I had to learn because in, in the beginning I was very, you know, I mean, you were there. Oh, that's not hip hop. Oh, that's not, no, 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 no. But I, I had this I had to step back for a minute. Like, you know, it's never it's not gonna be the same thing forever. Let me just let me just step back, allow, you know, allow people to do them, and then I can I can give my gems when needed. But I'm going to get aged on by the old school dude. But, but look, here's the beauty of it, right? Here's the beauty of it. Now, there's so many options. So many. There's someone in hip hop for everyone walking the earth. Hmm. You're right. Everybody. There's a, there is an artist or a group of art or a genre of, for everybody walking the earth. No matter who you are, if you hear something that doesn't represent you, it ain't nothing to go to your Google and find something that will. You know what I mean? So spend less time critiquing and talking about the things that don't represent you, and we should spend more time celebrating and uplifting the things that do represent us. 